What's up, Deaners? Today I'm going to show you all what is to be expected in the coming content update for Ghosts of Tabor. I have scoured the internet high and low, and I've compiled this list that will probably, definitely, certainly match the patch notes down to the letter. Before I get into the video, I'd like to ask that you like and subscribe the channel if you like this content, any VR content, or want to keep getting updates about Ghosts of Tabor news, as well as guides. And I also stream on Twitch, so check that out. My schedule is not exactly set in stone. I do this part time as a hobby, so bear with me. So, onto the patch. Obviously, it was rumored to be around the 22nd, uh, but according to Combat Waffle and Scott himself, that was just their target date. But obviously, it did not come out because it would already be out right now and I wouldn't need to make this video. So we have a lot of new content coming in this update, so I'm sure that's probably why there's so much delay going on. So let's talk about a couple of the things that are being added. Starting off with a couple of the most obvious and most anticipated items, we've got new maps coming. Uh, firstly, there appears to be a Motcom Yes Day map, which was hinted at by Scott in the Ghosts of Tabor Discord, link in bio. As well as a Motcom Yest underground map that's like the sewers and the subway system and all ties together. Uh, we'll get back to that and, and cover more about Motka underground a little bit later. We have some new guns coming to Ghosts of Tabor. Uh, specifically the Sig Sauer XM250 which is chambered in 6.8 by 51 aka the 277 Sig Fury. More on this weapon later. And we may also possibly be getting the Clint Eastwood DLC, uh, or just Eastwood. I think there's, it's been referred to officially as the Eastwood DLC. Uh, we've gotten confirmation there will be a revolver, lever action rifle, and a sawed off double barrel break action shotgun, as well as some cosmetics such as this cowboy hat here. It's also rumored that there will be some new armor, and by rumored, I mean it's confirmed at this point. But the boss, specifically the boss, you can't buy these, I don't believe, is going to have a Gen 4 Assault body armor with loin and thigh protection. So that's basically a 6B43 with a pad for your crotch and some th side thigh armor. So that's pretty cool. As well as a U-lock helmet with a face shield, and we'll talk more about that later when we get to the boss. Um... We have some new items coming out in the update. There will be a green key card. The green key card is supposedly going to be for Modka Underground, and we'll talk more about that when we get to Modka Underground. And flashbangs. So flashbangs are pretty exciting. I'm definitely curious to see how they're going to implement that. I know that it's going to look like Escape from Tarkov's flashbangs. So rather than being a white screen like Counter-Strike or say Call of Duty, it's going to be a small bright spot on your vision and everything else will be black. So it'll be a lot better. It's definitely not gonna blind you in VR. So that's very, very good. Um, they said they were going for a similar effect to Escape from Tarkov, so that'll be exciting. We also have some new mechanics coming out. Uh, at the time of recording, I think they actually already released this one, but NRSs have to be held on the arm until you're healed. Um, uh, but I also want to mention that they are rumored to be adding a med pouch armor module. So that's where you'll be able to keep your NRSs and your bandages and those sorts of things. And suppressors have now have to be screwed on and off. There's another mechanic. It's not a huge change, but it does add a lot of immersion and realism and does slow you down a little bit when you're looting a kill if they have suppressors that you want. And uh, if they're not screwed on all the way, they fly off when you shoot. So be careful about that. Another new exciting game mechanic that is going to slow down the raids and play styles a little bit as well as making the raids not die after five minutes is preventing players from extracting within the first two minutes of raid. So... This will be very good. It'll stop all the bum rushers who take all the good loot and it'll force them to play a little bit slower. So that's very nice. That's going to be good for those of us who aren't little loot goblins who just zip in and out, you know. And then the other mechanic they're adding is the streamer cam system. Now this is exciting. This is good for those of us who are content creators as well. Uh, so there's going to be a streamer cam system. I've seen teasers for it and it looks really good. 
but basically there's going to be, you know, you're going to be ADSing and it'll zoom in on your reticle. And it's like they've got helmet cams. Uh, I think they have a third person follow cam, like a drone follow cam, a uh, gun cam and a couple others. But it's going it's going to be pretty cool. Um, and I'm going to it's it's going to make the content way better because it'll be stable rather than you seeing everything the screen's shaking because you know people just naturally don't hold perfectly still and so it's gonna it's gonna look a lot better so i'm super excited for that one we have some new areas on some maps opening up uh one the matka miest museum and cathedral are going to be opened up i'm not sure if this is going to be on both day and night i think the museum uh we've already seen in teasers it will be open both day and night um the cathedral may be a different story not much is known about it yet. And the old rectangular bunker is rumored to be a vault on Matka Underground that can be opened with the green key card. So here you can see in this teaser that they are actually in the old vault. You can see the uh, gun wall rack there and there's some crates that they've looted. So that's pretty cool. And we also have a new boss coming to Ghosts of Tabor. The new boss is known as the Collector, presumably bodies being the thing that he collects but i'm not really sure that's totally a guess the collector resides in the mod Kamiest museum he has presumably five or so goons that protect him and appear to be kitted similarly to Kurtex goons the collector himself has the new ulock helmet with a face shield that says brain inside on the side which i believe is a parody of the intel slogan The Collector also wears the new Gen 4 Assault body armor with loin and thigh protection and is armed with the new Sig Sauer XM250 LMG and a Desert Eagle as his sidearm. When killed, he drops all of this gear as well as a green key card that accesses the old bunker on the Matka Miest Underground. Additionally, some other things they're adding. They're going to add support for quest users for the janky aim. So they're going to fix your... Uh, ability to aim with the SKS on quest it's something to do with its tracking it loses tracking when your controllers are one controller is hidden behind the other and they're going to it appears they're going to add colored tips on ammo to identify whether your ammo is FMJ AP or a tracer which will be very handy especially when you're sorting mags in your bunker and stuff and they are also going to fix distances bugging out and showing that your kill was further or closer than it should have been especially it's especially interesting for players who see that they have got killed from 300 meters away you know it's like it's possible but anyway there's a lot of threats of cheating and one other exciting new uh, addition before i close out this video is they're going to be hiring a dedicated anti-cheat staff uh, they've hired one person, I believe, for anti-cheat, pretty much entirely anti-cheat. That's his whole job. And they are going to be um, adding, you know, more aggressive measures to prevent cheaters in this game, which is very good. Uh, I know we all love Jeffrey. We love seeing him around there with the gigantic Golden Deagle. But sadly, people like Jeffrey are going to be a thing of the past. And I appreciate Combat Waffle and the folks over there taking this game and keeping cheating out of this game so seriously it's definitely a breath of fresh air especially as someone who's played escape from tarkov for a while i know how bad the cheating is over there and that is why i only play vr now and the last thing that they may be adding this one's not confirmed but they may be adding the character reconnect system if it's done uh, that may be the reason that they chose to delay the content update because they want to deliver the maximum amount of content that they can and if they didn't deliver it now, they'd have to wait until next wipe. So I'm pretty excited for this feature. I know a lot of people are because you disconnect mid-raid and you're just screwed and bam, you lost everything that you had that raid. And now, as long as you were, your player doesn't die, your player will stay there just still. So as long as your player doesn't get killed after you disconnect, you'll have the option to reconnect and reanimate yourself in raid. So that's pretty exciting. Um especially for those of us with poor internet connections. I know that for a fact. What's up, Diners? Future Editing Dino here, and I forgot to mention that they're also adding a reworked whiteboard to your bunker. They're going to add colors. They're going to add an eraser. So those hideout Picassos are going to be looking much better 
after this content patch. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, I would appreciate uh, if you hit like and subscribe if you are interested in seeing more content like this. I try to upload at least once a week Ghost of Tabor content. I upload shorts regularly and I stream regularly. Uh, as I said earlier in the video, I'm going to try and stream more often. If you're part of the regular Dino crew, you know that I usually stream on YouTube. I'm going to be testing out Twitch. Uh, I've been told by several people that Twitch is a better platform. Uh, I just know YouTube better, so I've been streaming on YouTube. They say Twitch is a little bit better for setting up viewer raids and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and test Twitch out for a little bit. You can follow me here. I'll put my Twitch user on screen. And also I will link it in the description. This video will go live Friday at 4 p.m. my time. So February 23rd, 4 p.m. Central Time. And I will be going live at midnight. So I will be going live at 12 a.m. Saturday, technically. So I hope you all come in and say hi. I really appreciate all your support. And thank you all so much for watching.